I swear, something like this happens every other month, and then by now, everyone should know better. So, this uh, Twitch streamer just got banned a couple of weeks ago for blackfacing Lifeline on stream. And, of course, there's that instant defense of people going, well, she's from Europe, she doesn't know any better. And I just have to say that that is the worst excuse anyone can come up with. I'll give you that if she was a child, maybe that'd make a little sense. Children are naive. They're ignorant by default. But this is a grown-ass woman who did this shit, who's streaming to Twitch, which means she's broadcasting to the world, and she sees this character, so she knows that these people exist outside of her bubble. You should know better. There's no excuse for that kind of ignorance. But fine. Let, let's, let's, in the defense of stupidity, let, let's, let's, let's dissect this a bit. If your child was to go and steal a toy from a store, would you just go, oh, he didn't know any better, and then walk away? Or would you try to teach that child that stealing is wrong, you know? Take away his other toys, ground him, or if you're classical, spack that ass. Right? You'd punish him because you can't just let it go. That doesn't make any damn sense. How are they going to learn if they don't know? I understand that some people are a bit of aggressive with their punishment. You know, they take a belt to your ass rather than trying to speak to you. But can you really blame them? It's 2019 and we're still having this fucking conversation. Just kind of getting a little tired of it. Just a little tired. Just a little bit. I'm having to constantly repeat oneself. To just stop fucking doing this. Because quite frankly, the fact that it happens so much and that it's always in the news and that you can just literally just Google the shit out of why it's wrong, I feel like people just don't give a fuck. They don't care, which means they aren't really be doing it to be flattering now, are they? Because I did notice there were a few that caught caught doing blackface and then after they got told why it's wrong went on a full racist rant so it's just kind of like hmm gee but i thought you liked black people no getting angry is not an excuse to go on a racist rant i've never been that angry to the point where i've been racist i'm not tired of explaining things though i have a whole entire platform for this so i'm gonna try to do this as politely as possible my cursing is not me indicative of me being rude I just have a potty mouth. The first defense is that America is just too sensitive that either these are white people getting offended on black people's half or black people are just easily offended. Oh my God. See, here's the thing about being in the age of technology and connected through the internet. <laughs> You're around everybody now. This is not a new thing, because I've noticed that on the internet, people seem to think that calling out bullshit is new. No, it's just that you now get called out by bullshit by way more people than you originally have. Like, hey, oh, we don't really have black people in this country, so, you know, you're not going to really get called out for it in your own country. But you're connected to the internet, so no one's going to sit there and hold your hand while you get your shit together. It's not overly offensive. It's not, it's not racist. It's not not prejudice, and it's not being a snowflake to call out people's racism and prejudice behavior. It's not. Why? How, how did we come to a society where just being a miserable dick is the norm and calling it out makes you a, a crybaby? No, it's not. We shouldn't be dicks to each other. It's not. It, why is that a controversial thing? Why is that so hard to understand to stop being a shit? Like, what happened in your life that you don't give a fuck about anybody? Just, I don't understand it. Reason number, defense number two. Imitation is a serious form of flattery. <laughs> oh my God, that's the biggest lie our parents have ever told us. I remember being <laughs> imitated as a child. And you know what? It always felt like mocking, probably because it was. I mean, I don't know how many times I got mocked for my hair as a kid, and now I have this huge-ass complex about my hair. 
you know, growing up, you see how it's kind of straightened right now? It's, it's, um, it's, it's curling up because of the weather. But I used to wear my hair natural all the time. When I put it in braids, people would call it dookie braids. When I left it out, people would shove pencils in there. They'd freak out if they had to grab their pencils in there. And by the time I hit seventh grade, I got my hair straightened once. And everyone's like, oh, my God, it looks so pretty. Oh, you should keep your hair like that. Huh? It's so nice. You know, uh, the hair touching was, no matter what my hair looked like, people would touch my hair. So annoying. But now, now as an adult, when I when I let my hair go natural, everyone's like, it's so pretty. Why don't you leave it natural all the time? It's like, gee, I wonder. It's probably from all that imitation I had to put up with as a child. Also, can we just point out that that quote is misquoted? Like so many quotes. Like how everyone goes, curiosity killed the cat. As if being inquisitive is a bad thing. But it's curiosity, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. Imitation is the serious form of flattery that mediocrity pays to greatness. So I feel like if you use that defense that imitation is the greatest form of flattery, you're kind of saying that white people are mediocre. <laughs> I mean, weird flex, but okay. Also, if you're imitating, though, why why does everyone have to be so bad at it though? Like the girl, she looks like a potato. And I'm not saying this against her looks personally. She just looks like she popped out of the ground. That's how bad her makeup was. She looks like a zombie. She did not look like Lifeline. Lifeline has this complexion skin. Her complexion skin looked orange. And eh, so it's like you can't even do a good job at it. You want to be lifeline, but you're really bad at makeup. Why even bother? That's just a waste of money. But who am I to tell you where to spend your euros? Can we just, the magical Negro friend, yes, that's what I'm calling them, because that's what they are. That, um, that black friend you have, that pat you on the head whenever you do something prejudice and make sure that they say it's okay. Legit. I just had an argument with a dude about Sony banning this racist and how it was wrong for them to ban the racist because freedom of speech. And I pointed out that freedom of speech does not protect you from private companies. And then he's like, I was like, I feel like you just want to say racist things and not get away with it. And he's like, well, my black friend and literally tagged his black friend. Oh my God. Tagged his black friend to back him up on the fact that he can't be racist because he has a black friend. Of course, then he banned me from the group. So, so much for supporting freedom of speech, right? That being said, in defense of this Twitch streamer, a girl came on and was like, well, I'm black and I don't see anything wrong with this. Her contour is on point. It wasn't, it, it, it objectively wasn't. She had dark all here, light here, dark here, and then started to fade here. Like, it objectively looked terrible. Like, I don't know what you're seeing, but it wasn't good. And, or maybe it was just a photo I saw. But I swear to God, sometimes there are just those black people that like to be those, uh, I'm not like every girl type of black person. I'm not like those black people. I won't call you out on your terrible behavior. <laughs> Stop! We don't exist in a monolith, but please stop encouraging these people. Just stop. Besides, if you have to point out that you're black to defend something, I feel like you're doing it wrong. I'm a writer. I have a community of writing friends. And there's this thing in writing when you're, one of your characters is black on how to describe their skin. Don't describe their skin by chocolate or any other type of food. Now, this doesn't bother me. Like, I see it in a post where it's just like, <laughs> if I see a white author describe a black person's skin as chocolate, I'm throwing the book across the room. I'm like, all right, it's not that serious, but okay. It doesn't bother me. Not because I'm black. Oh, I mean, it is because I'm black, but it's not because I'm black. It's because 
I myself have described myself as chocolate, milk chocolate, caramel chocolate. I'm not caramel chocolate, but you get the point. I've described myself based on food. So have many of my friends and many of my family's members. So it's just something I've always done. So it's like one of those things where it's like, I've done it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Like I said, not because I'm black. <clears throat> my ex is Chinese and we, when we went to his, uh, the one of the first time we gathered at his family's house for like Thanksgiving or something, it was just like, oh, hey, you want some candy? What kind of candy do you like? It's like, oh, she likes white chocolate. Ha <laughs> ha. Because he's Asian. And then he went and tagged me in a post. It was like, when you're tired of fried chicken and you want fried rice. I was like, that was us both being people of color, describing ourselves based on food. Jokingly, some people see it as a way of fetishizing. Yes, and I can see that. I totally understand if you feel fetishized, if the only way you're described is by food. But like I said, I've only done it in joking means, so I never saw a problem with it when I read it in a text. But I don't go up and go, I'm black. I just like, I don't know. I don't, that's, I don't go, I'm black and I don't see anything wrong with this. I just go, I don't, I, I never saw anything wrong with this. I think another thing they said was if she didn't do it, she'd be called out for whitewashing. And whitewashing applies to when you're literally changing a person of color character to non-person of color character. That's whitewashing. Like when you're taking a role, an actual role from a would-be person of color and giving it to a white person, that's whitewashing. And people bring up, if it's that big of a deal, why do they do it in White Chicks and Tropic Thunder, which were done in satirical reasons. Like, they are plot-specific reasons for them. The movie kind of centers around why it's happening. Blackface just happens. It's I shouldn't explain the different mediums. I shouldn't have to explain why they're different. They are. That being said, if she had just put her little buns in her hair and put the facial mask on, no one would have said anything. I've seen plenty of white cosplayers cosplay as black characters without the face paint, and they look phenomenal. They did a very good job. You can obviously tell who they were. Granted, a lot of black characters tend to have very telling clothing, so it's even like I cosplayed as Gaz as my last convention, but since Gaz wears kind of normal clothing, a lot of people didn't get it. But... Even if people don't get it, I still wouldn't paint my skin just so they could. That's all I have to say for this topic. If you like what you see here and you want to keep seeing more, feel free to subscribe. I make new videos sometimes every Wednesday. <laughs> I work a lot. Forgive me. And if you want to keep up with me on a daily basis, you can follow me on my social media. All my links are in the description down below. Later days.